What's up, everybody? She made me improve in the oh, place. What's up? It's the Guru. It's Bill LB from SeattleBasketballServices.com, Washington State's premier basketball scouting service in Washington State. Happy to be here. See, I got my all state, my, my state tournament t shirt on. I said all state because that's on my mind right now. We had the W I B C A all state team announced today. And, but I'm just gonna, it comes out tomorrow. So I'm just gonna give you a little taste of it. I'm gonna give you the player of the years for 3A, 4A, and then our Mr. Basketball from the Coaches Association. So, first, the Washington State 3A player of the year was our very own Isaiah Brown, Lakeside High School from Seattle. He broke the Metro scoring record this year, over 2,300 points. He passed Michael Johnson. Sorry, Michael, the great player from Ballard, who won the play at the University of Washington and Brazil. Our 4A Coaches Association Player of the Year was Malachi Flynn from Bellarmine Prep, the smooth guard who has Division I offers, 6'1", a great player, averaged 28 points a game. Our Washington Coaches Association Player of the Year, the underrated, the smooth, Mr. Smooth, the dimes. You can see everything from behind his head, Ja'Cory McLaughlin, six foot four point guard from Peninsula High School, going to Oregon State, was named our Washington Mr. Basketball. Congratulations, young man. Congratulations. Thank you for the sneak peek. Now, off to these predictions. I'm just going to rattle them off to you now, and I need to know who you got. First game, Lincoln versus Katamikin. Kamayakin, yeah. Kamayakin. Sorry, Kamayakin. Much love to all of you guys. Hope you guys, if you guys can't make it, that you tune <clears> into <throat> our live stream. We're trying to see what, where we're going to be located. So, Lincoln first. Who you got? Before Guru, I, who you got? Well, before I give you my pick, I'm just going to talk about both teams real briefly. For Kamayakin, um, it kind of starts with Isaiah Brimmer, 6'5". Um, he's on my 2017 uh, SBS rankings, athletic player, slashes to the basket, gets a lot of putbacks, um, causes a lot of havoc on defense, really tough player. And then they have their inside guys uh, with Scott, Lar Scott Larson, um, a big guy, 6'6", who's really burly down there, rebounds really well. Um, you know, and then they have Nelson, 6'8", you know, so they have the two seniors down there, then they have Brimmer. Um, the guards are solid, but they go inside, they pound the ball down low, and Isaiah just plugs from the wing at you and slashes. For Lincoln, we have the Brown brothers. Trevion Brown, one of my favorite point guards in Washington State. Uh, 2016 in my top 15, top 20 players um, in the state. Really smooth. I mean, I call him my, my court wizard because he's always doing something that, that just defies basketball logic with his, with his canning passing and, uh, and untimely steals. And, and, and a very good basketball player. And then he has a sidekick, his brother in the backcourt, shoots jumpers. You know, the little guard, five foot nine, Tajon Brown, really a tough player. Um, and then they have uh, the narrowest defensive player of the year from last year, um, Simon, Deontay Simon, really tough player. Lincoln is kind of opposite of Kamaya King. They want to they wanna press, they want to run, you know, they want to get us some threes and get the game going fast, where Kamaya King kind of wants to slow it down. Uh, have Isaiah getting that hole, pound the ball down low. With all that said, with all that said, the Guru's taking Lincoln. I'm going with the Brown brothers, Travion Brown. You know, he's going to set the table so all his players on his team can eat. Uh, they've been ranked in the top 10, you know, all year. And I just feel Lincoln's going to the dome. You know, I told Doodle Brown this, uh, Trey's dad, I told Doodle Brown, hey, you guys are going to the dome this year. Don't worry about it. The Guru got you. You know, the basketball guys have told me. So, we got Lincoln uh, over Kamaya King. Next game, Wilson versus Garfield. Oh, my goodness. Woo. Oh, don't say, oh, my goodness now. Uh, you know, David Jenkins is looking. David Jenkins, I mean, hey, that's the king of the king of Tacoma, David Jenkins. I mean, hey, he's had a great career at Wilson. You know, he scored so many points, so many great performances. Um, this year, David Wilson has really rounded his game out, the passing the ball, setting his teammates. You know, I had a chance to watch him earlier this season versus Peninsula, 
uh, against Corey McLaughlin, um, the player of the year named by the Coach Association. And I, I thought David Jenkins actually outplayed him uh, that, that day. David Jenkins, you know, he scores, he gets his teammates involved. All right? But back to Garfield, David Jenkins had 50 points last summer at Franklin High School all right, against Garfield. So David Jenkins, hey, he plays, he scores, he gets his teammate involved, he puts up buckets. All right. We, David Jenkins also has some help there. Uh, he got Emmett Matthews. Uh, he's in my top 10, 2018. Uh, a long player, 6'7", small four rebounds. Has a nice sweep, lefty stroke, block shots, athletic. You know, I told Tacoma about this kid. Um, they knew about him, but nobody really projected him to be as great as he is now. But I could see his high potential. I say Wilson has a two-headed monster um, in David Jenkins and Emmett Matthews. Um, then we go to Garfield, you know, they have a star-studded team, you know, they start, we, we, we can start with Jalen Noel, who's been playing some of the best basketball in Washington State. Um, I think, I think he's going to be moved up to the SBS number one player in Metro. Um, I think he is probably, you know, playing the best basketball in Washington State, regardless, regardless of class right now. He's really been on a hot streak. Um, then you got his partner in crime, his partner in crime, John John, six foot four guard, UW commit. And then you have Afonso Anderson um, down low with Jerome Brooks. You know, them guys are both all league caliber players, you know, who've been dominating. And then you have the, the speedy guards and Terrell Brown, the Metro Defensive Player of the Year. And then you have Jay Sean Augusto, um, the all Metro pick. With that said, with that said, if you can kind of put it together, I'm going with Garfield just based on their depth. I think they wear Wilson down. Now, the next game. Is Stanwood versus Emo Clock. But first, we're going to start with Stanwood. Um, it starts with AJ Martin, a six foot four point guard. A very good, heady player. Athletic, gets to the basket, gets his teammates involved. It's his team now. Last year, you know, he ran a team, but kind of let his other guys do the work. But this year, it's on him. He's not only getting his teammates involved. He's sharing a lot of the scoring low. So it goes on A.J. Martinka. All right. And then we have inside, we have Will Hone, Austin Will Hone. Um, he's a six foot five forward, athletic, does all the rebounding, the dirty work for them. And he's a problem, especially on them boards. Now for Enum Claw, you know, they go big, you know, with six four Garvin. Then they have Justice Rainwater, six foot six down low, seniors. Um, and then they have Caden. He's 2018, six foot four sharpshooter. But they have my hidden gem. He's hot right now. And that's six foot six shooting guard, Josh Erickson. Super athletic, will dunk on you, shoots the jumper well, gets to the basket, can handle. An excellent defender. You know, he they did beat Peninsula this year. Had a real close game against Auburn Mountain View. You know, other teams from their league. That's in the 3A regional. Really good player, really coming on strong, you know, getting noticed from coaches around here. And that's why I'm taking Eden Claw uh, to beat Stanwood. You know, they're veterans, they're seniors, and I think Stanwood, you know, is a little young, and they won't be able to stop them guys on the boards and get into the basket. You know, I think Eden Claw wins a close game. Yeah. Next, the next game. It's old day versus Edmonds Woodway. Woo! Guru, who you Woo! got? Woo! Man, this this game is a it's gonna be a very chippy game. It's gonna be very physical. Cause we gotta start with Edmonds Woodway. Oh my goodness. David Woodard, he's on my SBS 2016 rankings. Um, he's been up and down a little bit, but he used to play at all day. And what I mean by up and down, he's been up and down in my rankings over the last year. But he's a very good player, all-league player, who was at all day, who transferred to Edmonds Woodway, who I know is looking for revenge. He's going to come in here and play a very high-energy game and go right at his old teammates with abandon, with all he has, because I know he wants to win the game. So look for him, David Woodard, very crafty guard, six foot three, scores inside now. But he's physical, he's strong, and I think he's going to bring some wood for this game. But the key for them is going to be their point guard, Trevor Hollins, six foot one, six foot two. 
He's in my 2017 rankings. A very good point guard. Had a great summer last year at AAU. Played for Fred Brown's AAU team, ECBA. A very good point guard. Gets to the cup. Smooth lefty on his jump shot. But he has quickness. And I think that's what they're going to have to do to keep up with O'Day, which has the hottest unsigned senior guard right now, Michael Carter. You know, Michael Carter 3 has been getting 20 points a game uh, the last three or four games. You know, really long arms, been blocking shots, getting steals. He makes all day go when he's playing well. You know, they're one of the top teams in Washington State. They, they were ranked, you know, as high as five this year. So Michael Carter's going to be a tough cover. Then he has a sidekick, Quinn Bernard, SBS top shooter in Washington 2016. When he gets on the roll, it's lights out. This jumper just rainbow off the sky, you know, swish after swish after swish. And then they have the athletic freshman, Noah Williams, six foot four, super athletic, dunks, defends. You know, Coach Kerr, you know, Coach Kerr from Franklin, who had two state championships, has entrusted a lot on this young man to guard the other team's best player. So I think his, his year at Metro and all his experience is starting to come to the forefront. He's not a freshman, a freshman anymore. Um, then they have Xavier Smith. Also a guard who, on my on my all defense team for SBS. So the guru, the guru's taking O'Day to win that game. Um, I think it's going to be the Michael Carter show. Um, I think he's hot, you know, right now. Quinn Bernard's that hot. That game is Montlake Terrace versus Bellevue. Montlake Terrace did beat West Seattle. Um, they play a real fundamental game. Um, you know, they don't really have a, uh, many stars on that team. They like to play together, especially playing against Bellevue, um, who has the big sheriff in town over there. He's strong. He's tough. He's going to UC Davis. And that's big Mikey Hinn from Bellevue. Um, six foot eight center, power forward, play inside, play outside. Um, one of the best passing big men, if not the best passing big men in the state of Washington. Always one step ahead of his defense. He can hit that three-point shot. You know, he was creating... Um, off the dribble versus guard for the last night. Um, and that brings another point of why they're going to beat him. Bellevue took a beating from Garfield last night, um, 87 to 57. So I know he's, you know, stewing, you know, mad, chewing at the bit to get back on that court and get that taste out of his mouth. Um, and then his partner in crime at Bellevue is Sharif Khan, the six foot two point guard, the slick ace, I like to call him, really helms that ball well. With, with his expert ball handling, you know, is a very efficient shooter from three-point land, you know, brings the ball up against pressure, makes good passes, really runs the team with his high IQ, you know, does a, does a good job uh, with Coach O'Connor's game plans. And then you have the my 2018-ranked player, Andrew Kenny, who's really starting to rise up in my rankings, um, really strong, athletic kid, who's just now starting to see how good he really can be. So I'm taking Bellevue to win that game, uh, pounding that ball down low. Um, they have him crossing, cutting them screens. You know, they come down, you know, run that secondary part of the break and, and move that ball from side to side and then look in with the diagonal pass of Mikey Hinn. Uh, and remember, that dunk meter, they will have some lobs. So, hey, you know, if you're listening, Coach, uh, from Mont Lake Terrace, or anybody part of Mont Lake Terrace, uh, you better pack it in that zone and watch that log because Mikey Hens going to be flying out the air. So I'm taking Bellevue uh, to win that game. Now, the game I'm a little excited for, I got <laughs> up this morning. People hit me and said, hey man, I don't think Auburn Mountain View is scared of Rainier Beach. So I go on Twitter, Tristan McGill, uh, he basically confirmed they're going to have to play a game. They're going to have to beat us. <laughs> so it seemed like it's going to be a dog fight. <laughs> Auburn Mountain View versus Rainier Beach. Who you got, Guru? <laughs> well, you're right. It's been exciting morning on Twitter. You know, this is new era of social media that people want to try to control, but you really can't control it. You know, people are going to say what they're going to say and do what they're going to do. Uh, but in this case, for Auburn Mountain View, I think it's going to work uh, for them. 
um, in the sense of getting their big man, Tristan McGill, 6'10 center, uh, signed up uh, Western Oregon University, which is the number one team, uh, Division II, NC2A right now. Coach Jim Shaw from UW um, is a new head coach. He was assistant coach at UW um, in St. Mary's, a great coach. So he has some guys playing at a high level basketball right now. So Tristan McGill is going to play for him. You know, congrats on that. But Tristan McGill is doing right now. And I think he just comes from social media. When you answer a question or you respond to somebody saying the game's already over, you know, why they showing up, who's all over Mountain View. But Tristan McGill, man, this guy blocks shots like somebody's squatting, squatting flies. Like my grandma used to do up there on Beacon Hill, squatting flies off the window. You come in his paint area, he'll squat your shot anywhere. And then he alters even more shots. You got him mad now. He's, you know, his face is getting red. He's steaming. He's a skyscraper in there with his big, big arms up in the air. You know, a double-double. So Tristan McGill also can score with both hands. So he, he anchors the middle. So when Rainer Beach is trying to get in there, they're going to have a tough time shooting over him. His partner in crimes, Ryan Lacey, um, who has Division II offers. Um, word is, you know, I talked to his dad a couple nights ago out there at Bellevue. Word is he, he might commit to uh, Western Oregon University. Um, he's also uh, a big sky recruit, you know, has, has, a, has a couple teams. Uh, very interested in him, looking at him, uh, the Portland State, looking at him. So I think, you know, he, he has some options, but I think he's going to join his partner. You know, don't don't tell nobody. <laughs> don't tell nobody if told you that, but he might be going to join his buddy at Western Oregon University. But Ryan Lacey is a six foot three shooting guard, uh, really has a stroke, really gets to the basket. You know, he does a good job of his changing his speeds. You know, he's very deceptive. You know, Randy Beach, you find that out early. When you think you have him, he kind of slithers around and gets to the basket. Um, he dunks in open court. So I think he's going to cause a problem for Rainier Beach as well. So for Rainier Beach, you got two uh, Pac-12 uh, recruits, uh, two stars, and Sam Cutler, six foot six shooting guard, who's going to Arizona State University. Then you have Keith Smith, um, who's going to Oregon, University of Oregon. Um, when you go talk about Sam, he's so athletic, he gets to the basket, you know, he dunks, he gets his teammates going. He's been the most consistent player uh, for Rainier Beach. And then you have Keith Smith. He's really coming along great, doing other things besides scoring that basketball. You know, he's blocking shots for Coach Mike Mathia. He's rebounding. Um, he's getting out there, playing good defense, really playing good basketball. And then you have the best one-on-one -on -one player in the state of Washington, probably regardless of class, Kevin Porter, my number one 2018 player. I'll have you on skates. If you watch us on live stream, remember go to the live stream, proof is in the play, and subscribe so you can see us on live stream doing these games, doing these regional games. But we call him Kid Groovy. He gets in them skates. He starts crossing you over, spin moving. Nothing you can really do. You're at his mercy. All you can do is hope he misses the shot. All right. Then you have Nikhil Nelson, the quarterback, the best athlete on the team, six foot five, you know, 205, 210 pounds of muscle, lefty, who gets on that runway and dunks the ball, has a nice lefty stroke. Uh, and you have Khalil Shabazz, you know, the little general of the court wizard. This depends what mood I'm in, because he can do it all. He's the pesty defender. He's quick. He harasses you. So I think with all that said, I'm taking Rainier Beach. I think their athleticism is going to, you know, whittle Auburn Mountain View in the backcourt. Um, Tristan McGill, the defensive end, can cause some havoc and, and get Rainier Beach to shoot over him. But the offensive end, he might have a tough night because them guards are going to have a hard time getting that ball into him. Need I do mind our fans that it is one win away from going to the dome. You win, you go. You lose, you go home. But Guru... Kennedy Catholic versus Saddle Park. Who you got? This is a tough one. Um, Shadow Park had a star player in Andreas Brown, six foot four shooting guard, son of UW legend Dion Brown from Crenshaw, the man with all the hops, doing 360s in games and double pump dunks on Duke back in the day. You know, we used to go at it. You know, he couldn't stop me, of course, you know. <laughs> but, uh, Andreas Brown is very athletic, a very good shooter. Um, has really had a great year this year, 20 points a game, eight rebounds, five assists. Does everything for that team. You know, so 
like the cameraman said, we haven't seen Shadow Park play much. I, I did see him play uh, a couple times. Um, and they also have a couple of good guards, and they have a big man down low. Uh, but they're not, they're not very big. But they have Andreas Brown, who does a good job of distributing, distributing the ball, shooting, rebounding. So he does everything for them. But Kennedy, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. If you don't know about Kennedy, you should. They went to the state tournament last year. They have a couple Dynamo point guards and Emilio Manco, uh, one of my top players, 2017 rankings. He's in my top 30. Been playing lights out basketball, five foot nine point guard, comes down, pulls up on a dime. That's some of the best stop and pop game you will see. That's a great shooter. Then you have Kuno Royster, you know, the, one of the football stars of Kennedy. Also a great point guard. He's strong. He's fast. He gets to the basket, and he kind of more or less is running the team. And let's kind of Emilio Manco walk there and be this Tasmanian devil on this offensive end. He, he runs the team and distributes the ball to him. And then they have six foot six, six foot six James Jolly, the shooter. You know he likes to get in that corner or the wing and, and hit a couple threes. Then when you, when you think all oh, that's that's all he's gonna do is shoot threes. He drives by his man and flies the friendly skies and will dunk on you. So it's going to be a real good matchup. You know, I think it's going to be two teams kind of marry each other. But I'm going to take Kennedy. I've wrestled with this one because, you know, Shadow Park, you know, every year has been going to the Dome. Um, they play consistent. They play strong. And because they don't play in the city, you know, we don't give them, we don't give them much respect. And that's always a word around the state that, you know, we, nobody in Seattle respects the outlines outlining counties, but make no mistake, I respect Shadow Park. Um, it's going to be a close game. Um, my buddy, uh, Jason McCurry, let's give a shout out to Left Coast Recruiting. Uh, Jason put his picks up there, you know, uh, on Facebook. We need to have Jason on the show with us sometimes, but Jason McCurry, Left Coast, a great scouting service. Uh, you know, one, one, of, one of the big gurus, you know, in, in, in this state as well as I am, Don Nicoma, um, he picked Shadow Park. So I think that game would go either way. I'm going with Kennedy though. You know, I gotta go against Jason on this one. I'm going with Kennedy. Yeah. What I feel <laughs> is the game of the regionals. Man. Peninsula versus Cleveland. To Mr. Basketball Washington, Jacory McLaughlin versus them scrapping, screaming Eagles of Cleveland. Guru, who you got? Wow, this is this is like a state game right here. This is like a, sem a state semifinal game. Um, wow, it's this is a tough one. I mean, you guys seen this before. You know, when I lay in bed and I'm agonizing about this game last night, who's gonna win? You know, it's one in the morning. You know, I'm walking by CJ's room. You know, trying to get him some pointers of of. Ja'Cory McLaughlin, and this is before I knew he was a player of the year, and talking about the team, you know, I'm, I'm writing notes uh, for Coach Jerry Petty, the, the coach of the year uh, for Cleveland. You know, I'm invested. Oh, I don't know what to do. But let me calm down. Let me take off my Cleveland support daddy hat. Let me put down my pencil and paper. Put on my guru, put on my guru hat. Center myself. Here we go. Here we go. Let's start with the player of the year. Uh, as the cameraman said, Ja'Cory McLaughlin, six foot four point guard, um, going, to uni going to university, Oregon State University. Um, a very smooth point guard, you know, very underrated in the state. He is in my top 10 uh, for the SBS. Um, a very, very, very much arguments about him getting player of the year this year um, in the state of Washington. Um, I think he deserves the award, um, and I'm going to tell you why. I think he's the best passing point guard in the state of Washington, meaning pass first. He always has teammates involved in the game, and then when you think he can't shoot, he has a, a feathery jump shot uh, from the three-point line and beyond with, with, with super range. Um, he can take his game to another level at any time. Uh, he can push the basketball. You know, He does everything very well. He rebounds. If you turn your back, he'll go up and dunk on you. Um, when, when, when I think about Ja'Cory McLaughlin, you know, a, a lot of other point guards come to my mind, um, you know, but I think about some of the great point guards, um, like like the point guard who played, Abdul Ghadi, who played at UW, played out there in Tacoma. 
Uh, he's in that mode, just a big point guard, athletic, you know, plays a real good game. And then he has some good players to pass it to. You know, he has Jimmy Ritchie down low, six foot nine. He's a tank down there. He's big. He's a, he's a bruiser. You know, CJ knows him. You know, from my camp last summer at EBC, when CJ went to the hole and Jimmy Ritchie just slammed him to the ground. You know what I'm saying? So he's a big guy. You know, they're 21 and three. He's had a great year. But they got to play against the Cleveland Eagles. They got to play against the Cleveland Eagles and Jerry Petty, the Metro Coach of the Year, who has done a great job. It's not the best mistake in his team defense. You know, that 1-3-1, one, one, his 2-3, his man-to-man, -man, they've been swarming. Um, they're 6-5, six, 6-6 six, six on the wings. They're getting after it. They're denying passes. They're playing physical. I mean, they played Garfield last week. I mean, it was a fight. It was blood. You know, everywhere. People who bust their lips, nose, they're in their face. You know, they start with Devon Bolton, the, little, the, the, the guards, combo guard, the play point. Or shooting guard, six foot one, six foot two, goes straight at you, goes to the basket, average twenty points a game, and then he has, then he has the sidekick in C.J. Ellaby, who's been playing great basketball of late, leading Cleveland the last few games. You know, had twenty eight points, twelve rebounds against Garfield, six foot six lefty, doing everything well from the team, for the team, hitting three point shots, making clutch baskets. But where he's really getting this groove on is getting in that painted area, getting rebounds and just really playing with fire. And then you have Malik Abdul-Hawk, the Spider-Man. He's going to Western University. He's going to Western Oregon University on a football scholarship. And he, he's on my SBS all-defensive team. He's everywhere. You can't, get, you can't get many passes by him. He's on the top of that 1-3-1 one, because one, he's so long, you know, and he's a bundle of energy. And then you have Jalil Breland, the principal son, George Breland, All-American, Back in the day from Garfield and football and basketball. Chip off the old father's block. When he has that, that, that girth in him, he has a lot of heart. He gets to the basket. He, he rebounds well. Plays much taller than his six foot four, six foot five size. You know, so he's going to bring it. Because he's going to have to to combat that size uh, for Peninsula. Coach Jerry Petty might opt to put C.J. Ellaby on him or Abdul Hawk. I think throwing a few guys at Jacob McCloss and giving him a different look will help. Because he's, he's a very savvy point guard for Peninsula. You know they want to play slow down. You know methodical, run their zone. You know get Cleveland to play that pace. But Cleveland wants to run. You know get up and down, get some good shots up, but get up and down, have that pressure defense and create some turnovers. Now who am I going with? Well, I mean come on, I mean you know who I'm going with. I'm going with the Cleveland Eagles. You know I'm I'm, I'm taking C.J. Ellaby. Uh, you know, over Ja'Cory McLaughlin, uh, just because I think the Eagles are battle-tested now. I think they play in a tougher league. You know, they played Garfield three times. They've, they played O'Day. You know, they, they played Seattle Prep. They played Rainier Beach. They played the top teams in Metro. And I think they're ready to take that next step. You know, get to the Dome. I see a real close game, you know. But I just think at the end, at the, at the end of the day, Cleveland's going to have, have that defensive pressure on Peninsula and able to put that pressure on them when they create some turnovers at the end of the game and win a very close game. The road to the dome. Now you are saying to me right now that all four of the Metro League teams are making it to the dome this year. There are four of them? Is that all? There are four of them and Bellevue. So, that, I mean, if you want to count Bellevue, Bellevue's not Metro League, but they are part of our district. Well, hey, see King 2 district? But that's what you said, four? I thought we had six. As good as our league is, I mean, we, I mean, who else wins the state championships in the state but the Metro League? I mean, only have four? Oh, are you, are you kidding me? Oh man, so we'll probably have a Metro championship again, huh? Huh? <laughs> we the Mecca of Washington basketball in this Metro League. 